So if you want to be comfortable on longer rides, you need to start working on building up your endurance. Maybe you're riding epic cross-country rides or trying to prepare for a 24-hour or marathon race. So let's look at how you build up an aerobic engine to really give you that endurance. Try and ride consistently, not just one big ride a week. In an ideal world, you try and do lots of time at a low heart rate to increase your endurance, four to six hours a week. But that isn't practical for most of us, so just try and ride as much as possible, maybe four or five times a week, no matter how long you've got. Just try and fit it in as best as possible. Commuting can be a really good way of doing it. Road bikes can be good if you've got one. They can be less hassle to ride, and you can just add a bit of an extra loop to your normal commute to add some extra time. Indoor trainers are also great for topping up the time spinning your legs. I used to ride a turbo trainer in winter a lot. Yes, it's mind-numbingly boring, but it's convenient and dry. And for me, the less hassle it is, the less I can talk myself out of doing it. Try and add one 30-minute session a week on your turbo trainer. Pre-breakfast rides. It might mean that you have to get up earlier than you would like, but they will focus on burning fat rather than the limited supply of glycogen. Your ability to burn fat will help on long rides rather than starting to burn glycogen too early. Start easy, 20 minutes, then build it up, outside or on the turbo. Maybe even you use your commute. Heart rate monitors can be really useful, so keep a check on your efforts. Keep them down nice and low so that you can ride further. Keep your heart rate in zone three or lower. This is less than 80% of your maximum heart rate to keep things aerobic and enable you to ride further. If you don't have a heart rate monitor, this should feel about five out of 10 on the effort level. And you should be able to chat to your mates at zone three, but only just. Ideally, keep it a bit lower than that and aim for zone two, where you can ride for a long time and burn fat. Forget about your average heart rate. That could be a misleading figure because you could be beasting yourself up a big hill and then coasting down the other side. It's more useful to think about your time in those training zones. One thing that's also worthwhile when using a heart rate monitor is using software like Garmin Connect, Strava, or training peaks. All these are great for monitoring the data that you are putting out. The one thing is that keeping those averages really low can be difficult. The reason for this is that you have technical little climbs that might need that burst of power that will send those spikes in your heart rate. Yeah, so also add in some maybe some intervals to help with your power so you're not just doing endurance training. Also think about the skills that are gonna help you ride further, like pumping, line choice, being smooth and things like that. Yeah, those kind of things will help keep your heart rate low if you're smooth on the trail. Uh, for more videos from GMBN, you can click up here for our how to ride further, where we talk a bit more about how to prepare for long rides. And after your ride, you probably want a snack. So you should click down here for my post-ride snack video. What should we have? Fish and chips and a beer? Mm, there's some good and bad ones in there. There's some treats, actually. Some treats. What, uh, what is a treat? Subscribing. Yeah. That is a treat. You should subscribe and then you'll never miss a video here on GMBN. You can just click on us if you want to do that. Thumb up like. Thumb up like. Tony did it.